ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sam Roberts Wrestling Podcast. Introducing your host from New York, here is Sam Roberts. Welcome in <laughs> studio for the first time, but really like one of my first buddies in wrestling right. i mean years in the making pete yep. gas is finally here <laughs> what's going on man no, thanks for having me it's great i mean what was that new, new rochelle right? it was a new rochelle it was uh i think in 2000 right around two is that after 2008 because i was divorced i remember, that. <laughs> I yeah, remember that. right and i yeah i remember <laughs> and that was new because that was right. one of the reasons oh, you were so there you know, yeah that's yeah. right you knew why you, you had told me you were like well <laughs> yeah but it was probably right around there so it's probably right around 2008 ish right 2008, 2009. That's very accurate, yeah. Right. Yeah. And that was my first time I'd done anything at an indie uh-huh. show. It was before I went, after that, I started doing commentary over here and doing other stuff. Yeah. But I was, uh, we were both guest judges in a boxer versus right. wrestler match. Right. That's right. And <laughs> I remember, I I turned heel halfway through. Yes. Did you? We both turned heel. Right, that's right. You started it. Yeah. And then I went in as if, like, oh, well, there's some good guy judge here. <laughs> right. And then I hit, hit him with the low blow. The low blow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and we've been communicating ever since. Yeah. But at that point, in 2008 or whatever it was, 2009, you hadn't done anything wrestling-related for a long time, right? Right. No, exactly right. So I, when I got released in 2001, mm-hmm. there was really nowhere to go because <clears throat> I got released in, say, July of... 2001 and then uh 9-11 hit and uh, there weren't a lot of indie shows there was no place else to go there was no vince owned everything you know so jeff jarrett back in uh in september of 2001 had to cancel a show he had asked me to be on a show where they were going to do a a tour in australia for about two weeks 10 days yeah and it was the start of tna actually oh interesting and then he uh come home for about a week and then we were going to go to europe for like another couple weeks and uh and again you know 9 11 just destroyed yeah any any dreams of that happening so zapped up all the business so like but that's interesting because you weren't before you were in wwe you were not a wrestler were you no right did you have any aspiration to be i did Okay, so were did. you? Did you train at all before you got to WWE? No, oh, or you were, no. or, or Shane? How old are you when you? What year was it when the Mean Street Posse shows up? It was ninety nine. I was just about to turn twenty nine years old. Oh, so, so it was one of those things you wanted to, but you would just never. So true, true story. Yeah. One day I get called in. Uh, I, I I used to see Shane all the time because I used to work out at the at Titan Tower, which is where WWE. What is. were you doing working out at Titan Tower? It's one of the perks of knowing. Shane McMahon. Because he, so, so that that like that's just Shane's buddy. Yeah. Pete Gas is always oh, around. Yeah, Rodney too. Rodney, we, we used to work out there, so that's it was great. So he was funny. Yeah, we weren't making any money, so we right. were broke. So we were that he let us work out there. So, so. Shane just let his buddy from, <laughs> from Greenwich pop in and yeah. and work out in the tight. So so when you're working, all right, all right. So let's go to there for a second. Okay. Because you're just a fan. You're a big fan, right? Huge fan. Okay. So you're working out in the Titan Tower gym. Mm-hmm. Who are you working out alongside? All right, that's a great, great. Because that's question. where that's where because I remember as a kid. <clears throat> so like my first time in Titan Tower, I was probably ten years old. Yeah. Because we were living in New York, mm-hmm. and we were driving to Boston, you know, with the family. Sure. And I just you saw, saw the building, ninety five North. And I was like, nine. Dad, what is that? <laughs> Dad, Dad. And that was when it was the old blue right. and gold, you know, block yeah. letter yeah. logo. And so, God bless my dad, he actually, and he never interrupts a road trip, he actually pulled off, uh-huh. and we went into Titan Tower. That's awesome. And my dad was like, look, my kid's a big fan. You know, is there any tour? Do you do anything? And they're like, oh, not really. But and they had some, like, printed Hulk Hogan autographed 8x10s and a couple magazines or something. Yeah. So they were really nice about it, yeah. but there was nothing. They don't do that anymore, just so you know. At all. <laughs> I, oh, as far oh, as I know, right. I, I don't. So don't stop by and no, try to get stuff. Yeah, like, so don't, you know, whoever's right. watching this at home. Or, or, it's, you know, it was also, know. by the way, way before, like, buzz in security. Like, oh, yeah. All that It's stuff. like Fort Knox now. Right, now, yeah. I, I, I mean, I do stuff with them. I can't get in without yeah. actually visiting somebody. I know the owners. I can't get in the door. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but then I, would, I became aware of it, and I would always see, like, the gym with the neon yeah. WWF logo. Right, and stuff. you see it from the, from the street. So yeah. it's one of those things that you think about all the mm-hmm. time. So, so you're a fan, and you get to, that's just where you work out. Right. Who are you working out with? So now we, when we would go there, 
you know, throughout each year, there would be a different class coming to work with uh, Terry Funk hmm. and uh, t- Dr. Tom Pritchard. <clears throat> right, so when they, they were doing those camps. Right. The all camps before, all, way before NXT. But the, the first... talent that went through those camps, yeah. off the charts. Yeah. I mean, awesome. that's, that's, that's where Edge comes from. That's where... D- the Rock. The Rock, yeah. I, I remember... Well, it was Dwayne back then. I remember just like, you know, he was just... Uh, you know, just a regular great. I mean, he's he's to me. He was always down to earth. Anyway, the rock. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, he was he was there. Uh, Prince Albert, Test, Edge and Christian, uh, Mark Henry in the gym, in the gym, just working out. You <laughs> know, like. Awesome. But like you know, that was after they went and did their you know hours in the in the in the ring and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, but and it was just so I'll, I'll get to afterwards. Mm-hmm. I end up. Uh, when I, we get started, I'm I'm kind of jumping ahead. Do you want me to get, do that? You can jump ahead. We can go back. Yeah, whatever. I uh, I I was the person that wrestled someone special in the uh, for their tryout for WWE. And this was after you had gotten. We got started, okay. and we were in the we were training with Dr. Tom Pritchard in those See, rings. That's amazing, though. That like you went from like some like Shane's friend, yeah. To like a 29 year old that had never wrestled before that we can train to all right we'll put him in this tryout match with well, yeah because we were there training for, you know we were there learning yeah because which I'd love to get into how everything started with Vince and, and you know like Shane asking us and then how things kind of snowballed I definitely will ask you about that. <clears throat> but um Randy Orton's tryout really so we were there training and Randy walks the, through the door to have a tryout and what year is this 99. Randy Orton had a tryout in 99? He did, before he got sent to Louisville. Wow. Yep. Yeah, because he got sent to but he got sent to Louisville. I, I thought it was like a couple... You didn't get sent to Louisville that early, or did he? I don't know. If, I, I know that he had a tryout within the ni- year 1999. Wow. And it was with me. Wow. Definitely. I don't, even, I don't think people associate Randy Orton with a guy who's been around since 99. Right, you know, he, what was I mean? down, like, yeah, he was in Louisville for for you know a few years. Yeah, so so you had you had your you you gave Randy Orton his tryout match. Yeah. And how did it go? From what I remember, I don't remember a lot. I've been hitting the head a lot of times, so, <laughs> but I don't remember it being bad. And I remember uh, I did. I went to WrestleMania as a fan in the last time it was in Houston. I okay. want to say okay, and sat in the like. You know where we sit now, where the you know we're with everyone else. I sat in the front row of with the with with the crowd, mm-hmm. and it was like the hockey boards. Sure. And the and the talent came through, and all made their way to their seats. Mm-hmm. And Randy came over to me, and uh, out of he went out of his way to say hello. And he, you oh, know, mean the Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame. I'm yes, sorry. What yeah. did I say? WrestleMania. Oh, geez, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, comes up to me and whispers in my ear. Thanks, man. He goes. I'll never forget who my tryout was against. Wow, that's. Do you know cool. how how awesome that was for him to do that? Like he didn't have to do that. No, he's you know that he doesn't just even shows. have to remember, right? Exactly, right, right. Like it's not even like a, oh, there's P. Gas, whatever. Like he doesn't right. he, that doesn't even have to register with him. Exactly, and that just shows what kind of guy he is. Yeah, you know that's so. So when you're doing a tryout match for Randy Orton. Do you have gear, or are you doing it in a sweater vest? Because <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, is he wearing his in-ring gear for oh, his... Neatly pressed. No, <laughs> yeah. We were in, you know, we used Workout to train. Clothes. Yeah, you know, yeah. Knee, knee pads and elbow pads, and just to make sure we didn't get scuffed up. Yeah, because you're sitting there giving Randy Orton his tryout match, and Vince is like, well, that's not what Pete Gas looks like. I'm in there with Pete Gas. <laughs> so, so you guys are Shane's friends, you and Rodney. Yeah. And you're working out, and... I'd, I'm assuming, and I mean, Shane isn't on screen for a while. He's behind the scenes. He's doing right. this. He's doing that. He was just starting to come into the, uh, his own. I don't know if you remember his character. Mm-hmm. He came out in that that leather jacket, mm-hmm. and he was cocky and arrogant. Right. And, you know, he had sunglasses on. And right. It was it was a good character. I liked totally. it a lot. Yeah. 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 So so so, at what point do they go? What if we? What if we? What if we do something with Pete and Rodney? That I don't know. So, just to go back to what we were starting to talk about. Sure. I had asked Shane when I was 23 years old to get into the business. Because you're a big guy. Well, yeah. I, I'm, like, it seems like it's not like that far-fetched, especially as a young guy, for you to be like, I could do this. Because you're, you're, you're right. a big guy. Because I've been a fan since I can remember mm-hmm. watching. I remember staying up late uh, 
watching on Channel 9 WOR TV. Yeah. Trying to stay awake to watch Hulk Hogan wrestle. <laughs> I remember one time he had the guy up and he sat, he sat his opponent on the on the turnbuckle uh-huh. and he just started slapping him around. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember I was like, that guy's cool, you know, and I was a Hulkamaniac from 79 so uh-huh. before it became popular. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, I wanted to be in in the business and I went to Shane one day in his office and I said, hey, I said, what do I have to do to get in? And... Uh, He's like, oh, you don't want to do that. This is you're 23 now. 23. So it's six years before you actually are on TV. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, five and a half, six, yeah. Sure. And he's like, you don't want to do that. He's like, you're gonna empty your bank account. He says, because you can't have a job. Because what job's gonna let you leave at two o'clock to go drive to to some city in, in Memphis? You know, if, if you're in Memphis and have a job, to, to drive to Arkansas and go set up the ring and then work. You know. He says, basically, in the beginning, they, you're not treated real well. Right. You know, he was just doing everything he could to talk me out of the business. Part of the reason why I think he did is because he didn't want, you know, if it, if I was really that bad, then what would he have done? You know, it, it's a tough thing to do, you know, like, even when we got released, you know, that's got to be a tough decision. Yeah. You know, a tough situation. So. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. So, so, then, so then you put it on hold. I didn't. Yeah, that was it. You're like, all my, right. My, 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 that day, I remember leaving, and I remember being kind of crushed. Right. Kind of like, oh man, you know, the, I wanted to really do this, and you know, but if, Shane's one of my best friends, and here he is. You know, he's like, no, you don't. He's like, you don't want to do that. You right. Know? Right. So. And so you're not going to sit there and be like, well, let me start working for this random promoter over here. Let me join. Like, no. You know, Shane McMahon is, is right. your guy, so it's right. like if he's saying no, then yeah, maybe not. But well, he he would know better than I would. Right. 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 But you still work out in the gym. You still are yeah. around all the time. Exactly. So then, yeah. So then, at what point are they like? Actually, we could do something over here. Nineteen. So, about a month and a half before Mania, mm-hmm. Shane. It was during a week. It was like a Wednesday. Shane said, "Hey, he goes." Uh, he came into the gym. We were working out, and Rodney would be. Blur- Remember Prodigy? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Rodney would play the same. So he he found a disc. He played the, whatever disc he was into. It could be a, it could have been uh, Alanis Morissette. <laughs> he would crank that thing in the gym, and like the whole all the walls would be shaking, and it'd be like other people, <laughs> like and ca- people from accounting in there, and they're like, and you he's know, listening to Smack My Bitch Up. Oh yeah, exactly. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I still love it now because of him. <laughs> so we would be in the gym, and the, uh, Shane walked in and said, "Hey, he goes Friday. Uh, can you guys come by the office around five o'clock?" So we did. We sit down. And is that a weird thing? Like, are you like, why would you want us to come by the office? Or did no. that happen from time we to time? We used to do that all the time. So we would usually just go go see him uh-huh. and just like, you know. Shoot the shit. You you said it. I didn't, yeah. know, I didn't know I was allowed to swear like that. So, yeah, we would just, you know, <clears throat> and then, you know, bust each other's balls or, or whatever the case was, you know. Sure. So uh, we went there at 5 o'clock. And he, I remember him sit, sitting in his, his uh, behind his desk and. He's like, hey, he goes, would you guys do me a favor on Sunday? Like, you know, of course we would. And uh, he said, here's the script. And he tore it up in front of us, threw it in the garbage. And he said, I want you to dress real preppy, and I want you to meet Chris Chambers down at the studio. You're still there, by the way. Yep, still there. <laughs> yep. And he said, uh, I want you to talk about how... You know, we grew up on the mean streets of Greenwich. Now we're laughing, you know, like because yeah. there's no such thing as a mean street. As of far, course, you know, except for maybe a couple stock stockbrokers getting upset with each other. <laughs> uh, but he said, you know, talk about how we got in fights and running from the cops and s- stuff like that when we did when we were kids. Yeah, and uh, so we did. And I remember Rodney and I that Sunday. It was <clears throat> we were supposed to be there at ten o'clock. So eight o'clock, Rodney comes to my house. We had a case of beer. <laughs> if you if you ever go back and look, yeah, you can tell I'm kind of messed up. <laughs> we drank a 12 pack of beer each at eight Ooh. in the morning. Why? Just because you were so nervous? nervous? Yeah. Come on, you know, like, yeah. we had no idea what we were doing. Yeah. And so then, now did he? And did he, he say took the like, edge off too? Did he say like that we were thinking about introducing you as characters, or is it just go do this? Shane, you should know this about Shane. Mm-hmm. Everything's kayfabe. Right. We were on a need to know basis. I love that. To this day, uh-huh. with him, I'm on a need to know basis. I'm not kidding. You. <laughs> I love totally. That. I, love yeah, that. I hate it. I can't. I like to know what's going on. You right. Know? Right. But he's on. It's always a need to know basis, and he never. Uh, 
He never changes. That's great. <laughs> he kayfabes the heck out of me. <laughs> so you're a twelve pack in, twelve pack in, and you go to and you go to film these. What would I'm assuming? It sounds like go on to be vignettes. The, the vignettes. Mean Street Posse vignettes. Right. Yeah. Right. And how did and like did you like them? Like did what was that? Like? I hated the way I looked. Uh huh. You know, I was a, I was built like an offensive lineman. Still, I was still had my, you know, right. I was still heavy, and I was like two eighty five at the time, and. uh but, and did you guys like say like we're both gonna wear sweater vests? Like we're gonna try to match this a <laughs> well, little bit? Well Shane suggested because you know, wear <clears throat> wear like a college shirt underneath and some sweater vests and so we you know, we did the whole that whole thing. We we didn't own them. We had to go out and buy them. So <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> just that <laughs> just happened that way. So then all right, so you film these things. Um everything goes pretty well, but you don't even know what mm-hmm. you're doing. Exactly. And then what happens? So each week they kept showing now, vignettes. Do you know they're going to show them? Like, are they like? We- oh, he said. He said, "Come in Sunday. Yeah, Monday night we're going to. You're going to be on Monday Night Raw. We're airing one of them. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's why we were drinking a twelve pack of right, beer. Right. You know. Right. So they cut it up, and then each week they would show another, you know, a tease of the of the whole thing and us talking about different things. And and it's great too because people are sitting there, and I remember as a kid, you're like, oh, who are they bringing in? Oh, who's going to be the mean yeah. street pasta? Like, right. I know it's these guys, but obviously right. they're going to be with somebody. Or there's going right. to be some kind of faction. Right. Not realizing it really is just we're going to train Shane's friends. And the legit- At that point, there was no changing. I mean, training. There was no training friends. We were just there to do mania. I got gotcha. you. <clears throat> that was all we were supposed to be there for. Okay. So, you know, I guess from what I from what I hear backstage stuff like people are like who are these guys you know what's what's this all about you know mm-hmm. no one knows anything and then because it's need to know <clears throat> right yeah and you remember the night that shane was i'm sorry that raw was in albany the week before that wrestlemania i'll tell you you'll remember this uh-huh. when stone cold pulled in with the beer truck of and course. spray okay so historic yeah. you know monumental time yeah that's the ma- so that night was in albany Shane challenges X Pac to a street fight six days before WrestleMania. Uh-huh. We pull up in Corvette convertibles, give him a couple of potatoes, hop in the car, and go, and, uh, and, and, and speed off. And are they like, okay, we're flying you into Albany? <coughs> we're just gonna have no, you do- we fly, fly into Albany. We had to try. <laughs> <laughs> Come to Albany. <laughs> yeah, go to Albany, <laughs> and um, you know, just go there, and we'll, uh, you know, we'll shoot this, and then we we drove home that night. That's so funny. And uh, then when they were bringing us to Philadelphia for WrestleMania that weekend. And are you like, what the hell is going on right now? We have no idea what's going on. They're just like, okay. And you're kind of losing your minds a little bit because you're like, are we about to be in WrestleMania? We, yeah, we didn't know. Right. We we just like, oh, you're going to be a part of the festivities. So like there was like a, a the corporation, which is who I was a part of. We, there was a, a, a party with all WWE and fans and the corporation was up top. Where no one can get to us, mm-hmm. and just like, and we were there partying, drinking, having beers. Gotcha. We had a blast. It was unbelievable. You know, it was just, it was so much fun just to be a part of it. But like, know? that's so funny. So like, it's this fan event thing with, like, fans were there, but yeah. fans could not get to the corporation. They got to the other guys. But right. The corporation's different. Which know, we is were... literally like that's <clears throat> living the character. The gimmick. Because yeah. right, because if you watch the corporation on TV, they would rent out. The top floor, Absolutely. and they wouldn't let people come touch exactly them. VIP section, and then you actually get to party, <laughs> right? That's great. <clears throat> so we we enjoyed that, and then uh, you know th- during that there were I remember there were some kind of you know the Rock had a few lines like you know, like they put on a little show for the people as far as like talking smack, but we were up in that elevated area, sure. And uh, I forgot whose opponent was. I'm drawing a blank. I don't Which know. WrestleMania was it? Fifteen, maybe. <laughs> yeah, so it's probably Stone Cold. Stone Cold. Yeah. That's what I was thinking yeah. too. So there's a whole you know whole thing going on there, um, and then we, they bring us to Mania and they have us sitting in the front row, and I remember I'm a Giants fan, uh-huh. a football Giants. I'm a huge fan, yeah. and I remember a bunch of New York Giants to, like two rows behind me, <laughs> um, like off to the right, and they're snapping my photo. <laughs> and because like they're, and, that's how big Roy is, by the way, uh, at that time. Yeah, like they, 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 like unreal. just doing some vignettes and like. <laughs> you know, doing a quick run in on X Pac thing, yeah. and like you're a superstar, right? Amazing. So now they <clears throat> all they say is you know they tell us you know we're gonna do a spot where X Pac comes out, we're gonna hold him, so X Pac's back is to us and with the barrier, we're holding his arms, and Shane's gonna get on him a little bit, mm-hmm. but eventually X Pac breaks out, mm-hmm. and he, he, I knew he was gonna hit me with an elbow, mm-hmm. 
So instinctual, just from watching the business, I'm like, okay, he's going to hit me with a, sh they said, bow your chest out and he's going to hit you with a, an elbow across the chest. So I did and he, he hit me and I remember saying to myself, take a bump, mm -hmm. you know, don't, don't not sell it. Right. Put him over. Right. It just instincts. Right. Took a bump into the chair. I sold that elbow for five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> for the live audience. If you ever go back and watch, yeah. after the elbow, they go, they flash back. I'm still going, <laughs> making his face like, oh, you know, like that hurt. And Lawler, uh, King is like, you know, King's like, Pete Gas is still hurt or whatever. He said, I forgot what he said, but yeah. yeah, I just sold the heck out of it. Right. So something happened that night. And you guys are right now like through the roof on cloud nine. Cloud nine. Just that you get to be a part of this. Like, this is the funnest thing you've ever done. Right. Right. Oh, by far. Right. By far. We're doing a favor for Shane. It's amazing. Keyword favor. Right. So now. Right. Gotcha. Right. <laughs> so now, 10 days later uh -huh. after Mania, we're done. Yeah. Our careers are over. And is that tough? Like, in the days after WrestleMania, Depressing. you're like, yeah, hi. Yeah. And then that was it. So that was a little taste of it. Right. Because eventually, down the road, I get released. And that's, like, really. Right. That's a tough time to I'm be. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um. So the thing is, uh, we're going to be here for like 24 hours. <laughs> okay. so, tell your wife you're not coming home. <laughs> so we go, we go to, uh, <clears throat> Shane calls Rodney and I back in the office. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Sorry. Right. And he says, uh, this is for you. He had envelopes for us. Uh -huh. So we didn't know what it was. So we opened it up, check from WWE, Yeah. you know, for getting paid. And we're like, what's this? Is it a big check? Solid fifteen hundred. Okay, okay. Yeah, you know. especially when you thought it was a favor. Like, well, that's the thing, right? We we were like, what's this? We didn't expect a thing, uh -huh. and we were doing it for, as a favor to Shane. And here he goes, you know, he's like, here, you guys get paid for this. Now Rodney and I are broke, <laughs> so right. it's like that's gonna absolutely <laughs> help. But you know, it's just. We didn't expect it. Right. And we, we should paid for the sweater vest, right? At least. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the beer we, dro we drank when we were down right. in Philly, yeah. But, um, yeah, so we just, you know, then he said, um, how much vacation time do you guys have? Because back then, Monday Night Raw was shot live on Monday. Right. And then on Tuesday, there was no SmackDown. Okay. They taped Raw for the following Monday. And then the <clears> next <throat> week, that was all. Right, right, right. Right. So we would basically have to take a few days off every couple weeks. And, uh. I was running an office in uh, in Astoria. Uh, you may you may know of it. Lightning, it's Lightning Rentals. Okay. It's uh, it's a production production okay. equipment like okay. Star Trailer stuff like that. And sure. I was running the office. I was a one man show, and I had Oz, Sopranos. Oh yeah. I had all all the HBO shows and. But HBO didn't pay. You were still broke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't get it. I don't. I got paid through my company. They're the ones that made all the money. I don't make money. Nothing. No. You were just sitting there running it. I was just a guy out in the cold watching yeah. the trailers. <laughs> so, but um, yeah. So anyway, we had, uh, you know, we got asked to do this, and I think eventually it wore kind of thin on the company I was working for, and when Rodney was, you know. That you'd have to take like a couple days off every two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like for me, it was like, do I want to be behind the camera, right, or in front of the camera? It's kind of hard to pass that up. Yeah, it's not like you know those opportunities don't grow on trees, especially when it's not <laughs> like uh, no. I think I'm going to be a wrestler and I'm going to do this indie gig and I'm going to do yeah. this and I'm going to try it and they're going to. It's like no, no, no. You're on Raw. Yeah. It's like yeah, I think I'm going to stay, right. keep doing Raw and figure it out right. the rest later. Right. Yeah. So uh, I did that for and uh, so now okay so when when they realized they obviously they just liked you at WrestleMania. Vince Russo. Vince Russo liked you. Vince Russo told me in an interview last year that we saw, he saw these vignettes and he saw us and he saw the smug attitudes that we put it in with it uh -huh. and he's like he says we have something here and he and Ed Ferrara ran with it and just and just did it yeah so then do you start getting trained as you go so now yeah so yeah. <clears throat> once <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> so once we had the time to you know now we knew we were going to be doing this stuff when we weren't traveling for WWE, we were doing our regular jobs and then meeting Dr. Tom Pritchard to learn how to bump and everything else. And is that what it would, they had the ring in the warehouse at that point? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's where. So, uh, uh, do, what, what at that point were your interactions with Vince? Because does he just see you as like Shane's goofy friends that he remembers? Your questions are great, by the way. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. So, growing up, we were different. 
Yeah, we were we we were like basically treated like one of his sons. Right. But we're different when we get to WWE. Now we're employees. Yeah. It's a business now. Right. Yeah. There was no favoritism mm -hmm. whatsoever. Uh, we weren't allowed to have T-shirts, action figures. You know, now yeah, there, there was never mean, mean Street Posse toys. No. Yeah. They took the thing. You know the the, the camera the scanner? that goes scanner thing yeah. that goes around your head. They took shots of that, mm -hmm. and they put us in. We were in a video game. We were like hidden characters in SmackDown <laughs> Two for PlayStation One or uh -huh. whatever. You know, like. Um, but we didn't have any. A lot of perks, right? You know, like when, when it went public, went uh, publicly traded. Yeah, the the guys were allowed to buy stock. Rodney and I were not. Gotcha. I guess they consider it insider trading, or they didn't want to. Whatever the reason, we we weren't allowed to have certain. Servers. That's interesting. So it was almost like because <clears throat> you were so close, you were given less, because the perception could not be that you were given more. Exactly. That makes sense. I mean, right. if that's the way he's gonna. Run things, and to be fair, you were given more in the sense that you just got to come off the street and get to WrestleMania. True. So right. that's kind of the trade-off, I guess. Right, and that brings me to the locker room. Mm -hmm. So the locker. That's room, what I was going to ask. Like, yeah. what, what are the I know, boys? Think? You're good. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Because well, because when you when you, it's one thing to just do a spot at WrestleMania. Right. Even that's a little like whoa. There, any camera time at WrestleMania oh, yeah. is precious. Absolutely. But like the idea that you're. Especially that you're not working house shows, that you're just doing TV, yeah, just, and you're on every week, right? Like that seems like a, a, it's a, tough. Yeah. Well, see, when we first got there, we were a novelty. Sure. And the, and the boys didn't treat us like well, they treated us like we're novelties. You know, they were very nice to us because of Shane. Mm -hmm. You know, and and a couple of them, like Prince Albert, <clears throat> Test, would, Test. No, I should take that back. I I hated Test, and Test hated me until the Lover or Lever match in SummerSlam. Uh huh. But uh, you, you, people don't even have to buy the book now, you know. They just <laughs> it's just everything. Is here. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I try to avoid like some of my follow-up questions, and those follow-up questions will be in the book. Okay, right. There so that go. way, there's still more <laughs> stories in the book. Um, but so, yeah. So they're so, they're treating you like novelty yeah, a little bit, and then uh, all of a sudden, yeah, they bring us back, and you could tell guys were kind of like, uh, "What's he doing here?" You know, like when are they going to leave? You know, like right. I thought we already did this. <clears throat> right. Yeah. So then we started putting people over, and uh, we paid our dues in a different way than you know. You know how a normal wrestler you know goes to a school, yeah, does the indies, hopes to do well enough to get recognized, you know, by sending tapes or whatever photos, getting a tryout and getting going to developmental territories or whatever, and then hopefully getting called up from there. You know, yeah. it's a long process. Yes, and it's a, it's a difficult one. Yeah, and. That's the process that Shane. That's the the specific reason why Shane told you don't be right. a wrestler, right? Because of what the process exactly, is. exactly. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, we go from being on the street to in the ring at Monday Night Raw. Right. That's a you know, to our credit, that's not an easy thing to do. No. I mean, Sam, you you you, we did that show together in your show. Yeah. And that was. Were you nervous? Oh my god. Right. Yeah, and there was this. How many people were watching that show? Uh, probably a what? Few hundred. Few hundred. Right. Yeah. And there's this thing in the back of my head the whole time, like, what are you doing here? You don't deserve to be here. Like, what? Like, look at these. Are, you thing. know who these guys are. Right. Was, like, Pete Gas has been on TV. He's wrestled on TV. What are you doing here, Sam? Right. right. And that's what Pete. No, Gass I didn't. Is. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I never said that. No, no. In my head, though. Oh, in I'm your head. I'm saying that to myself. Oh, okay. I was right. Say, nobody I never said that. Nobody said <clears> that to me. Everybody treated me great. Yeah. But, like, in my own head, that's my own self-doubt, my own, like, that's right. just the weirdness that happens and the <laughs> right. nerves that... that Insecurities and yes, all that. Yes, exactly. Right. Exactly. And so, so now, but now you're doing that... In front of millions. Right. Big... Right. You know, you're walking down the ramp for the first time, you're like, don't trip, don't trip, don't trip, yeah. don't trip. And this is yeah. Raw in 1999, like, you can't stress enough. Right. Raw in 1999 was the biggest show right. on TV. It was the biggest, yep. you know? So now here we are. We're there, and we were only we were only there about a month and a half, mm -hmm. and we lose the loser loser leave town match against Briscoe and Patterson, right? And that was supposed to be it, right? Our vacation and that's, and that's time, kind of perfect. It's Vince's Stooges versus yep. Shane's Shane Stooges, Stooges and, right? Yeah, and it's a way of us getting getting us out the door, mm -hmm. and it's one of the highest rated fifteen minute segments <laughs> oh, in cable no. history. And are you so you sitting there like because obviously you're depressed again. 
because it's the end of your run again. Right. Right. And then when you find out what the rating was, this is awesome. Yeah, tell me. So, I, I, sh- I told you, Vince never showed us any favoritism once we were in the business. The ratings come out for that Monday Night Raw. We're driving home the following day. Phone rings. It's Shane. <laughs> hey, guys, what's going on? Yo, great job last night, blah, blah, blah. Uh, someone wants to talk to you. Boys. <laughs> hey, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> One day, he told me that he told us Rodney and I on speaker that he was proud of us. And he you never had, said that to us. And you had the, you just said a minute ago you had a familial relationship with him outside of the business. So this yeah. is this is this is a but paternal. When I, when I say he never like said stuff like oh I'm proud of you guys and no, nothing like that. Right. It was always you know like we'd hang out have beers so we we we've watched playoff football games. But you'd in look the up to him. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, so, absolutely. Now, so it's just a, a different. <clears throat> It's not only do you look up to him because now you work for him, but you've looked up to him for a long, long time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, he's he was like another father to us, you know, but he never gave us that that type of statement. Right. So when he did, I remember being in the car driving. I was driving, Rodney was in the passenger seat, and we just looked at each other. Didn't say anything. You know, just but you know, then we realized and we said, you know, thank you very much. He's like, Do you guys realize with the talent that we have, the rock Stone Cold, no one's had a higher rating than you. <laughs> That's unbelievable, <laughs> you know. And it lasted for years. I don't even know if it's ever been broken. Uh-huh. I don't know the the whole history of it. I remember seeing in San Antonio. I saw uh, Briscoe, mm-hmm. Gerald Briscoe. Years later, he was mm-hmm. getting the year he got inducted to the Hall of Fame. I saw him the uh, the night before, and along the the walk or whatever they call that thing uh, in San Antonio. No, what, I'm sorry. It was not San Antonio. It was Orlando. It was at, uh, he got the, that's the year he got. The last time they were at, uh, at the Sun Bowl or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> that was, yeah, that was right around the same time. That was WrestleMania 28. Okay. So that was you probably. Got, you know all that. That's great. Yeah. I can't all, remember anything. Well, I haven't gotten knocked in the head. You know what I mean? <laughs> <True>. So, <laughs> yeah, that was, no, because I remember that was WrestleMania 28 because I was there for that one. That was, right. I think, the first WrestleMania that I traveled to. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay. So it's, in Orlando, so right. that he he got inducted. I saw him. It, I think it was at Universal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, City Walk or whatever. City Walk. Yes. That's it. Yes. Yep. So we were. I was there with a with a, a couple. You know, myself, the girl I was dating, and another couple, and we saw him. And he hugged me, and he whispered in my ear, "We still got the record." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because Briscoe and Patterson have got to be like over the moon for having that record too. Yeah, that's I mean, amazing. Why wouldn't it? Patterson hated the idea of fighting the Mean Street Posse. You didn't like it? He was afraid. I don't blame him. <laughs> we had no experience, <laughs> right? You know? And here, you know, he's not. It's not like he really wants to take bumps for us. You know? Did so, he make that clear to you? Yes. Like I, 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 yeah, he's like he's like don't hurt me. That's <laughs> <laughs> so 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 Vince tells you he's proud of you guys and like you had this record and everything. Yeah. And in that phone call, does he say? We're going to need you back next week. No, we were done. Still done. Still done. Just a congratulations. Month goes by. Owen Hart passes. Mm -hmm. That was in June, I think June of uh, 99. That sounds right. And then we we get a phone call uh, that they want to bring us on the road and start training. Wow. They were going to bring us back. And that's kind of out of nowhere. like Out of the blue. So now we're working, working with Dr. Tom. We had night sessions after work before... Right before we got released, we would learn from Terry Taylor, uh, Michael Hayes. Wow. Like, we were learning from the best. Yeah. You know, and uh, it was really it was cool, man. We so, were, when you say going on the road, does that mean house shows and everything? No, well, we weren't TV? ready for house shows yet. Okay. But actually, we did one at Madison Square Garden, <laughs> and it was... Uh, yeah, this is right. This is before we got released. Yeah. So, or let go. And uh, it was, we were in Rock's Corner for the corporation. Uh huh. It was him versus Stone Cold. We jump up on the apron. Rock was going to shoot Austin into us. We were going to hit him so he could, whatever. Austin reverses it. We hit Rock by mistake. Uh huh. Typical Mean Street Posse screw up. Sure. Into the stunner. One, two, three. Rock rolls out. We come around, Rock, we're sorry, you know, we, you know, we didn't mean that. Uh-huh. He's like, you want to make it up to me? Now, this is a house show at the sure. Garden, the Garden's going crazy. Sure. He goes, get him. 
So we have to go after Austin. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think you know where this is going. So I go, I come after Austin with the Polish hammer. Uh-huh. <laughs> kick to the gut, stunner. Rodney kick to the gut, stunner. Yeah. Couple beers poured on us. Yeah, I'll do it. And then, but dude, <clears throat> you took a stunner from Austin in the in garden, the garden in, in 99. It's not over. Rock rolls in after Austin leaves. We're selling in the ring. Double people's elbow. Uh, Place goes crazy. It doesn't get any better. It doesn't. It, like, uh, look, goosebumps. Yeah. You can't get any yeah. better net. You wow. know, so yeah, it was uh now, that was cool. Have you gotten to a place now where like you can look back on it and like now that cause you know, you get that high from the whole run. Sure. Then you the low drops, and I'll ask you about it, but the it's gotta be a huge low when you get released. Yeah. It is. Now are you at the point where you can look back and go, dude, like literally I had no business doing any of it, right? But right. literally, everything that I could have wanted to do, I did. Like, or no? No. Does here, so here, <clears throat> here's the thing. There's part of that I say yes, mm-hmm. and part of that I say there's something missing still. So the thing about the Mean Street Posse, and, and a lot of people, you know, you hear comments about how oh, yeah, they, they rode the coattails of Shane it's not true. They gave us an opportunity. See, the problem is the characters rode the coattails of Shane. And right. the character is so similar to you that that cutoff sometimes mm-hmm. gets difficult for people to make. If we didn't get a reaction from the crowd, and that's the idea, when each wrestler that gets in that ring uh-huh. wants to be booed or cheered, right? that means you're, put, you're, you're selling tickets. Right. And the truth is, if we didn't get a reaction and didn't work hard, and didn't put people over, we would have been gone. Vince, there was no reason for Vince to keep us. Right, right. And it, he wasn't, he had already done us a favor, right, from what, in, you know. So basically, like, all those people that made those comments, it's like, you don't understand. We were taken from the street, put in the, the mean ring. Street. The yeah. mean streets. Yeah. <laughs> put in the ring with the best of the business, uh-huh. and survived. Yeah. And you know, like Rod- and, by, and by the way, like if anybody knows any, even from a fan <laughs> perspective, and if anybody knows anything about Vince McMahon, if you are not providing value, mm-hmm. you're not sticking around. Why? Yeah. Why keep it? Right. There's you know? two, especially at that time when everybody in the world wanted to be there. Yeah. So it's like if you're not providing value, independent of everything. Yeah. You're gone. You're gone. Yeah. So <clears throat> something kept us there, and it was that work, and that desire, and we got killed. Mm-hmm. So we paid our dues. Like we didn't do the whole circuit of you know learning the ropes and getting you know, we paid our dues in that ring. Did people <clears throat> were stiff? Yeah. Bradshaw hit me with a, a chair shot. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know if you remember this or not. You may not remember. It's uh-huh. December of '99. Okay. He wrapped this chair around my head, and it was. You got to go back and look. I'm going to. It's now. on the. Uh, it's on the network. Is it on a pay per view or on a raw? It's on a Raw. Okay. Monday Night Raw. Not the Smack. There's a SmackDown version where we, we face them the following night. Oh, and that's the last thing you want to do. Right. So <laughs> I got, there's a, that's a, that story's in there, too. I'm telling the whole book right okay. now. So the, the, that story's in there. So I get blasted in the head. They had Lugs Boot of the Week, and they would show a highlight of someone getting beat up. Mm-hmm. It was on for two weeks. They showed it two weeks in a row. Just because it was that? That brutal. I mean, oh. this thing. Teddy Long was... Teddy Long... Was in the corner, uh-huh. refing the match. He went like he went like this. Uh. He went and, and he brought the leg up and he covered <laughs> up. That's how almost vicious. like a Heisman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Teddy Long. <laughs> so, but yeah, he uh, he winced and it was it was literally. I had my hands at my side because I was like, I'm taking this chair shot. I'm not putting my hand up. Yeah, I got to prove. We're trying to prove ourselves. So there was no sort of like. <clears throat> that was unnecessary. He didn't need to hit me that hard. It was, or was there a little of that? It, well, in my head, like, were you pissed about it, or were you? This is. It wasn't. It wasn't about that. I yeah. part of it was, you know, it was harder than it should have been, mm-hmm. right? So, I, but I, when we went backstage, you know, everyone shakes hands and say thank you for protecting you, and we went backstage. Bradshaw told me months later, he's like. I thought you were going to hit me. I thought you were going to take a swing. I thought I was going to be in a fight, whatever, which, you know, you probably would have buried me, but yeah, the, um, he's ready for <laughs> He's so. pretty tough. <laughs> so, uh, but he said, uh, you know, we went backstage and I put my hand out. 
I said, thank you. He told me months later, he's like, that's the day I earned his respect. Wow. So now the following day, we fly. We have a charter flight. We all go to Tallahassee. Yeah. Ron Simmons is from Florida State. <laughs> oh, no. So we're on the tarmac. Which, by the way, I would like to say. Yeah. If Vince or Shane were making sure that you had the easy route, they're not putting you in the ring with Farouk and Bradshaw. Oh, Right? I got the story. I have, I'm have. i telling you, we're going to be here a long time. I got this story that on why we face Farouk All right, let's Bradshaw. first go to Tallahassee. Tallahassee comes. We're on the tarmac. Mick Foley walks up to me. Are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm fine. I would not I would never sell it right. to the boys. Even I was fine. I saw a huge flash of light, and I heard ringing, but I went down, and I was fine. He's like, Pete, he's like, I've taken a lot of chair shots. And he said, that one was bad. So I was like, no, I'm fine. Eventually he walks away. Jericho comes over and he says, hey, he goes, uh, are you all right? I was like, yeah, I'm fine. And he goes, you know you're going to be facing the acolytes tonight. <laughs> and I said, of course. <laughs> he goes, he goes, uh, <laughs> he says, uh, feed your back. He goes, you don't want to take another shot like that to the head. And sure enough, they, they, uh, the agents, when we went and did the match, uh-huh. said he's not taking a, a chair shot to the head. You know, just hit, keep hitting him with your finishing move if you want and stuff. And Which, by the way, the finishing move is that clothesline, which is not like it's well, yeah. like, oh, that's way easier. This yeah. was like a power. Right. We did some kind of power bomb thing, too. Uh-huh. But, yeah, I, I took the clothesline. I took a big boot. I've taken uh-huh. Uh-huh. I've taken a lot of finishers, too. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was part of the <clears throat> Street Posse's charm, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Taking exactly. a lot of finishers. Um, okay, so, and I'm assuming too that one of the reasons why you guys got involved in the hardcore title stuff was because uh, it helped disguise some of the stuff you hadn't learned yet. You know, you know the business. That's that, exactly what happened. Yeah, right. that, we were still trying to learn. They sent us to Memphis. Do you want me to tell the story on how we got to face the acolytes, though? Yes, please do. All right, so this please is tell me good. That. Yeah, we're on a plane. Vince, I'll, I'll never forget this. Vince and, and Shane are sitting first class. Mm-hmm. And Rodney and I are in front row of coach. We're sleeping. We're exhausted. Do you travel in your in your sweater vest to keep the gimmick alive? I knew you were going to ask. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. I, didn't no the, I, just, I didn't live the gimmick. I need to know where, where, where it starts and when it, where it stops. I just need to know. Uh, that I, I don't. <laughs> so we're in the front row. We're sleeping. And for the people listening to this now, he is not wearing a sweater vest today. I am not. I'm sure that no. that's where the question would go next. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so we're in the we're in the uh, in, for, in the first row, coach. Rodney gets hit in the face with a magazine by Shane. Mm-hmm. So Rodney wakes up, looks at me like I did it, mm-hmm. right? I, it makes that noise with all the paper. He look, We both look into first class, and here's Shane looking back, going, <laughs> laughing, right? <laughs> so, so Rodney grabs the magazine, and it, he's ready to whip it back because it had that hard plastic cover back then. They had sure. The, and he was going to whip oh, it. Oh, yeah, the, 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 the airplane version of the magazine. Yeah. So that way they could reuse it exactly. seat by seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he goes to throw it, and Shane went, points to Vince. <laughs> don't, hit it. Don't, don't, don't do it. So I go, Rod, stop. Don't do it. He, he goes basically in a very clean way, I'll try to say. He's basically like, give Shane the finger. He goes, fuck, yeah, F you. Yeah. And he throws the magazine down, goes back to sleep. Uh-huh. Five minutes later, he gets hit in the face again. <laughs> <laughs> so Rodney's ready to even get up. Right. And Shane's laughing. And I'm laughing now, too, because it is funny, it's right? It's funny. And, sh- and we we, used to, we always have fun with each other's pain mm-hmm. whenever, you know, someone, someone's hurting. Yeah, yeah, that's just the way we were. So Rodney's getting ready. And again, Shane's like, you know, do you want to hold this? So he doesn't he doesn't do it. So finally, he, Rod, Rodney tells the uh, stewardess. I don't know if he made believe that he was Shane. He says, uh, could you let the people on the plane know that uh, WWF superstar Shane McMahon is on the plane and we're glad to give autographs to any and all people that are on the plane? <laughs> oh, no. So he says this now. Now Vince is away. Vince is up, and he knows what's going on. You, all you hear from the first class is, <laughs> you know, his laugh. Yeah. And he says, uh, he didn't, Shane looks back, and he goes, I'm getting even with both you guys. And I'm sitting there going, what What the F did I do? You know? So, so sure enough, that following week, Mean Street Posse versus the Acolytes. 
Oh, and it yeah. went on for weeks, and we just got our heads blasted. Oh, and it was all because... And it was because of that. And Shane they started it. Yeah. <laughs> so <Yep>. funny. <laughs> he finished it, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, all right, so let's fast forward then. Um, so when you guys get released, was it just one of those... Joey Abs eventually comes on board, and mm-hmm. was that because... Your buddy. Yeah, my buddy Joey Adams. <laughs> that was my second posse member that I met because yeah. he was a radio fan. Yes. He was not a, a an actual Greenwich boy, though. No. Um, no. Was that just because they wanted a, they needed, a guy who could actually work? And, yeah. They no. needed a, a worker to come in and uh, while we were still trying to catch up. Right. So they release you guys, and is it anything more than, you know, we're just kind of done? Or is it a bigger deal than that? So <clears throat> when we were on television... We were also going to Memphis. Because I also, I do remember, too, it just hit me that I, I feel like towards the end of the Mean Street Posse run, that's when you started wearing a sweater vest with no shirt under it. Right. And I feel like that was a more serious Pete Gas. like I'm in a real, I'm really a, a wrestler. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like we were trying to make that whole transition. Tran- yeah, transition. Yeah. So we were, you know, like I said, when I first started, I was built like an offensive lineman. I was mm-hmm. 285 pounds and I was... Built shaped like the you know Pillsbury Doughboy, <laughs> and then you know. But as time went on, if you look as 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 the shows go on, it goes to no no shirt underneath. Yeah, kind of letting the gun show happen. Right, right. And uh, you know, Getting t- some of the baby oil on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lubing up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And then uh, yeah, so we ended up uh, trying to come up with new characters too. At the same time, I started wearing a singlet, doing uh, house shows, and. We're just you know trying different things because eventually, what we were told was we they were going to bring us in the to the Mean Street Posse and then split us off to do singles, mm-hmm. and uh, so we just you know we were we were learning it we were getting it <clears throat> you know we're learning every week, getting help from guys like Edge and Road Dog and X Pac giving us all the two you know like they'd pull us aside after matches you know, Edge would say you know like why'd you do that mm-hmm. you know like. You know this. You do do it this way next time. Like really trying to help us, you know. And um, we were getting it. So now, <clears throat> when we were on television all the time, we didn't know what the heck we were doing. Now we're like learning. Then we get released. So now, I felt like by the time I got released, I had been broken off from the Mean Street Posse. We had been off television. That was uh, January of two thousand one. We were off TV. We were doing a lot of stuff in Memphis, traveling, and then I got uh, moved from Memphis, Tennessee to Puerto Rico. By yourself? By myself. That's interesting. <clears throat> so. Uh, but you're I, working in Puerto Rico now. I'm working in Puerto Rico. I'm with Mosh from the Headbangers. Right. And D'Lo Brown. We come in together as uh, they, they put masks on us, and they called us the, the White Angels. Bring us in, and then eventually, a couple weeks later, we rip off the masks. They see who we are, uh-huh. and it's like they go crazy. Right. So, um, that great experience. Uh-huh. At the time, I was like, "Why?" I don't. Know. I never understood. I did not know why I was specifically sent to Puerto Rico until a week ago. Yet, week ago yesterday. Why were you sent to Puerto Rico? I said to Jr. Jr. did. Jr. is the one that made that decision. Yeah. And I did his. I did his podcast, uh-huh. and he said. Uh, we saw something in you to make money. Because I asked him, I didn't ask him on the podcast, I asked him afterwards, because uh-huh. I was like, when I get off the air with this guy, I got to ask him why, because for years, for Despite 17 you. years, or wow. 16 years, it bought, like, did they do this to empty my account, my bank account, or did they, you know, because it was expensive. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, was there a reason why I was sent to Puerto Rico? And uh, sure enough, that was... Uh, it was. It, he said that we saw we saw a, 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 an opportunity to make money with you, and we needed to get you to start working against different types of so people. Did you find out why they released you? It was a numbers game. That was it. Vince had bought WCW. Right. Of course. And he, of course. He had both rosters, and Shane told me years later. He said, "Had we kept you, you guys weren't on television. There was no thing. If we kept you and cut uh, cut other guys, then." The resentment would have still been there, and you would. It, it was. It was one of those things where, well, you know, we couldn't keep you, and then we weren't doing anything on television anyway. So right. So what are you they, gonna do? <clears throat> right. So we got released. I was told that uh, by Jr. Mm-hmm. that Doctor Death was going to contact me, Steve Williams, in to go to Japan. Didn't work out. Uh, I never even heard from him. 
Mm-hmm. And then that's when I was doing some indie stuff back then. And then, then the Jeff Jarrett part where... And then it, and then it just dried up. Thanks a lot, Bin Laden. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then uh, do you have to cope with the fact that, like, okay, I need to figure out what life is beyond this? Yeah. Yeah. But it was hard because... For again, for years, I didn't. I had no closure on the whole Puerto Rico thing, but I also was like, you know, now I'm finally. I, I get it. Right. I want to use these. Skills. I want to show people yeah. that I wasn't just there to ride coattails like people accused us of. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It was one of those things where I, you know, I wanted to prove what I could it do. Was like, so you evolved past this bit part, and just before you could show your evolution, yep. just timing. Right. Happened. I got a call from Chris Benoit when I got released. Uh-huh. And I'll never forget it. He said, uh, he told me, he goes, don't quit. And I was like, but I have no place to go. Where am I going to go? He says, I don't care. Find a place. Do indies. He said, Pete, I've watched what you can do now. Mm-hmm. He goes, and you're good. He says, go find work and stay in the business. You know, but I didn't want to dump, lose my whole bank account. And I didn't right. want, you know. For the three years I was there, I I was able to get out of debt and have money in the bank for the first time. For the first time, yeah. And it was like I didn't want to, you know. So I had to get and now back you're in your thirties, and it's like yeah, I'm about real to, life is happening. Right. I wish I was still in my thirties now. But. <laughs> so, does any part of you wish that you had emptied the bank account so you could continue that thing, or do you know that logically it wouldn't have worked? It would have been it would have been hard because uh, it was just there was nothing going on like there was no yeah it would have it would have it's not like I could have went to Minnesota to do a, a show or anything like that I couldn't do anything like that like it was more of you know because people weren't paying for that flight if I if I got my own flight yeah maybe mm-hmm. but the the amount of money people were they weren't paying money so yeah it wouldn't have worked out anyway. right so you're still friends with Shane. Yes. Uh, I saw you most recently, I think, at the NXT show at the theater at the Garden. Yeah, that's You guys great. sitting up front. Yeah. When, when uh, I mean, Shane gets bombarded at those things. Mm-hmm. But uh, when he gets bombarded, do you get the, uh, oh, my God, P. Gas? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I, I would imagine that you yeah. do. Okay. And I yeah. mean, not only because it's P. Gas from Mean Street Posse, but because. It's with Shane. Exactly. Right. It's like, right. it's legit. It, right. This is the real Mean Street Posse. Right. Well, yeah. I got there. I was the week before I was in Orlando and I got to see Matt Bloom and he mm-hmm. runs NXT now. And he said, Hey, why don't you he goes, This Wednesday we're gonna be in uh in the garden, why don't you come by? And he gave me four tickets. So I called Shane. My wife couldn't make it mm-hmm. and I said, uh I said I go, bring the boys, why don't why don't we go and we'll So Shane used your tickets. Yeah, that's right, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I love that. I got his back. Don't <laughs> yeah. worry, I got it. Shane. I got some tickets. <laughs> yeah. Come on, let's go see. Uh, and so was, and so Shane was like, "Yeah, all right, I'll roll with you." Shane was, he was. I said, "What are you doing tonight?" And he's like, "I'm gonna train." So I was like, "Oh, I was like, all right. I was like, I got tickets for NXT. Why don't you get the boys?" And you know, I, I said, "I never get to see you." Mm-hmm. And he's like, "You know what? Let me make a couple calls." So he brought uh, Rogan and Declan to the, uh, not Rogan. I'm sorry. He brought Declan and uh, oh God, I'm this is terrible. I ever I'm drawing a blank. This is what happens when you get hit in the head. Yeah, I don't know his kids' names. That would probably be (laughs) one step beyond my fandom. Yeah. Knowing Shane's son's So anyway, he brings his two two oldest sons Uh to... to, uh, Rogan had to stay home because he was too little. Okay. Okay. And uh, so anyway, they they come to the show. We're sitting in the front row. And uh, before they get there, I'm there early. I was backstage. I got to meet a bunch of the guys. Mm -hmm. Great guys. Great workers. Yeah. Everything about them. It's just phenomenal. I mean, you know. Great you know, show. I don't have to yeah, tell I mean, they're awesome. You. And uh, I come out, and the girl was like, okay, you're going to be sitting over there with Shane, and we're going to have people, you know, we're going to have security because we don't want Shane to get bothered, you know, whatever. I'm out there. People are yelling. They, people are noticing me then, mm-hmm. which is cool because it's always, it's, it's very flattering sure. for that. You sure. Sure. You're a big star, you know this. Well, well, you all are. I mean, you, I'm you, not in the Mitri Posse. Well, but. you're not MSP, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> the um, but you know, it's like it was cool to be, you know, years later to still have people. people yeah. still do. You know, people still send things to my house for signatures. And, and, and it's stuff. almost one of those things that like it resonates, and 
especially, I feel like you give it a little time. Right. And then you allow people to look back on it. And then they're like, oh, yeah, I love those guys. You know what I mean? Right, like, right, they, right. like, give them enough time so that it's not in the forefront of their memory. Yep. And then all of a sudden there's this new sort of life spread. I mean, quite frankly, based on that, it's not too late for Mean Street Posse toys to come out. It's not too late for toys. I'm just putting it out there. I, and, well, I wish someone would hear it. <laughs> it would have so, been cool. It would have been good. So uh, uh, tell me uh, real quick, because we're about to run out of space, I think. But okay. uh, tell me what you were about to tell me before we started, that uh, you were at WrestleMania, uh, this previous WrestleMania, Yeah. for the big Shane Undertaker, Hell in a Cell. Right. And, I mean, you know, and we were talking about it, and I was saying that, of course you have to be there because yeah. not only is he one of your best friends, right. this is the big <clears throat> comeback. You never... Did you think he was going to come back? No. Right. No. It I didn't... Thought, it didn't... No. And every time, you know, I never even... Talking to him after he left, we never even discussed wrestling. That was it. It was always about family and, you know, just other things like that. It was never... There was never any talk about wrestling. Right, yeah. I didn't want to bring it up because I didn't know if it was a sore spot. I didn't know anything, so I just... And he wouldn't have told you anyway. <laughs> he wouldn't tell me. Yeah. the heck out of him. <laughs> so, <clears throat> tell that story real quick. I uh, Yeah, so, 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 and I was going, like, and, and as a fan, yep. you had this thing in your mind that he might do the Hell in a Cell spot. He might. Well, here's what happened. So, I get a call from uh, a, one of the guys from Barstool Sports, mm-hmm. and he says, uh, hey, uh... Shane, I, I have reason to believe Shane is coming back tonight on Raw. So, I mean, like, I get Wow, because you know. that was a shocker for... Right, so yeah. I, and I don't know who leaked it to him, but that bothers me the whole... I love I love kayfabe. Yeah. Um, and social media is destroying it. You know, I can go on for hours about that, how much I hate that. But, uh-huh. um, so, he says, can you confirm or deny this? I said, I'll tell you what, JJ. I said, I'm not going to... I'm going to tell you straight up, I don't know... But if I did know, I would tell you I don't know. And he goes, okay, I get it. So now I get off the phone with him, mm-hmm. and I'm curious. So I call Shane. And I'm like, <laughs> bro. <laughs> yeah. So we're talking, and I was like, what are you doing? He says, oh, I'm driving to Declan's school, and uh, I'm dropping off a guitar. You know. So we're talking, and all of a sudden he's like, all right. He's like, I'm here. He's like, I'll talk to you later. I was like, all right, see you. So I was like, he's not going. He's not going to be there. And what time is this? This is like 3 o'clock. Okay. Little did I know. So now we're, we're watching. My wife and I are sitting on the couch. We're watching Raw like we do every Monday. Mm-hmm. And here comes the money hits. <laughs> and you're like, no. My jaw literally <laughs> hit the ground. He kayfabed you again. And I am cursing <laughs> at that TV. You effing. <laughs> I was swearing at him. I'm like, you kayfabed me again. You know, I'm so hot about it. <laughs> Texting him. I'm like, I can't believe you kayfabed me, blah, blah, blah. So as soon as Vince says, you're facing Undertaker mm-hmm. in a hell in a cell, right? I turned to my wife. I said, we're going because he's jumping off that thing. Right. Because Shane is... How much we got time? Okay, yep. Right. Shane's an adrenaline junkie. That's that's what he's labeled in my world. Uh-huh. So anything that is too high or too fast or anything... That, and people who read the book, are, there's all these stories from when we were kids. They'll get it. Shane has been built this way where he loves that adrenaline rush. He gets off on it. And uh, sure enough, it's I, I like I have to be there. Just I had to see... I had to be there for him to support him, not only because he just came back, but because of that whole thing. And, uh, you know, he put us in, like, the f- we were at we had great seats, so I think we were, like, in the fourth row center. And I remember watching him climb up. And I was, like, I was nervous. Yeah. I, and I was legit, legit nervous. <clears throat> and I'm watching, and I knew he was going to, obviously knew he was going to do it. And, uh, you know, he does a sign of the cross thing. I'm like, please, just live. Yeah. You know? And he... I mean, you that you were sitting right. I know where you were sitting because yeah. I saw you. The he it looked, didn't it seem like he was picking up speed as he was coming down. It really he was, did. He was moving. Yeah, especially because like, and it and it's so crazy because it, it it's so tall. Yeah. That there is actually like you're aware of the time. Usually when somebody jumps, the the time that they're in midair, you're not. It's quick. You're not aware of it. Yeah, you could have read a book. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Falling and falling. It was unbelievable. Exactly. It was like he was never coming down, but he was going fast. Yeah. And then he just you know. That I remember just almost standing on my chair to try to get a look because there were people in front of me, 
And I was just like, man, you know. I remember, so after WrestleMania, we go to the after party. Yeah. And uh, I'm looking for him. I'm waiting for him. I'm talking to old friends. I got to see Jericho, who I love. We're leaving because it, three, it's 3 o'clock Dallas time, which is 4 o'clock my time. Normally, I'm up for an hour already. Uh-huh. And I got I to gotta go to bed. Yeah. So we go to leave. We go through the uh, the lobby. And there's Ric Flair, Stone Cold, Shane, <laughs> Shane's wife, and his kids. Uh-huh. And uh, so anyway, we're, we're all sitting there. And uh, they're all standing there. I walk by. Say, we say hi to them. And Shane... Shane's like the, he looks like the Tin Man, but when before the oil, right? And he's like, "Hey, what's up?" And you tell him he's, he's hurting. Yeah, I said, "How are you feeling?" And he turns to me and he smiles. He says, "Oh, wonderful." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "I would hug you, but I know that I feel like I'd hurt you more, so I don't want to do that." Um, but it's it was amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, well, look, I, I there's just so many stories. Yeah, and uh, people should know the book. You have not told all the stories that are in the book. I have no. There's no. a lot. There's a lot. If in you there. can't tell by now, I like to talk. Yeah. And there's a lot of stories. <laughs> there's a lot of stories in there. So tell people the book is available now on Amazon.com. Yep. And uh, soon in in Barnes and Nobles and bookstores and everything. On the 21st. Tell people all about it. Like what's so, it called? The whole deal. How can they find it? The book it? is called Looking at the Lights. Right. Because after after every <laughs> I match, know, I called looking at the lights. <laughs> at, after every match, I was looking up at the lights because I was getting pinned. <laughs> Um, but that's the the meaning behind it, and that was given to me by Tony Gurria. Because mm-hmm. Tony Gurria, I used to tease him all the time. Say, "We're going over, going over tonight." <laughs> and he goes, "Tonight, you're looking at the lights." <laughs> 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 so that became a running joke with him and I. But he, uh, it's that's called. called <laughs> when I was uh, when I was in eighth grade, I wrestled like mm-hmm. amateur wrestling or whatever. Yeah. I lost every single match, and I can't remember how I who said it to me. <laughs> but at some point, I just said like. Uh, I started getting familiar with the ceilings of every public <laughs> right. high school in the in the county. Oh, they won track in '84. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, uh, I got to see you know a lot of banners, a lot of Celtics banners, yeah. stuff like that, <laughs> yeah. all that good stuff. Architecture. But yeah, uh, so it's called "Looking at the Lights." Yeah, it's uh, 256 pages of a fun, fun read, and it's like of all the eras for you to have a run in yeah for it to be full of great stories like right. that's the era i think i and a lot of you guys want to read about it's it's this right. sort of it's the <clears throat> attitude era it's like probably the least one of the least conventional stories of a guy who had a right. run it's unique because no one else has had this story Absolutely. No, no one else has had except rodney except rodney <laughs> but rodney doesn't have a book right exactly so but that's why it's unique because it's and it's something that if you love the attitude era mm-hmm. you'll love the book the book is tons of stories of your favorite wrestlers. It's stories about me uh, with a rock, with a fan, and stuff. All, all, all different stories like that. And if you're not a fan, like you weren't born in that attitude era, if you're a wrestling fan, right? <clears throat> who hasn't? And because I know I was, I did before I got into wrestling. Who's never sat there and said, "Hey, uh, I wonder what it'd be like to be in the ring with the Rock. I wonder what it'd be like to work in front of the crowd." Right. It's what would the there. stunner feel like? What would the stunner feel like? Yeah, yeah. In so the that is amazing. Yeah, in amazing. yeah, exactly. In I, I, I just got goosebumps again. I love it. That. So, well, man, I'm glad we did this finally, and Thank you. Uh, we should do it again. I'm sure that we've barely would, scratched the surface. We have barely scratched it. Cause then, we'll definitely do. Can it Can I again. plug my Twitter? Please do. All right, you guys can follow me at I am Peak Gas. Uh, a lot of stuff is going to be coming up soon, so uh, I'm sure you'll be interested and. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Of course. And who knows? Maybe I'll see you in Orlando. You will see me in Orlando. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Thanks, man. All right. Thanks.